While Louisville's men's team was expected to make it to the Final Four as the number one overall seed, their women's team is a party crasher who knocked off the number one, two, and four seeds in their region to punch their ticket to New Orleans, and more importantly, forced their star guard's parents to tie the knot after 28 years together. It was Easter Sunday and my dad was like, anything can happen, you know, so my mom was like, all right, well, if you guys be Baylor, I'll, I'll marry your dad. And so that ended up happening. <laughs> they ended up getting married um, the next day. It's just an honor and a blessing to be here right now. And we're just going to enjoy this moment. Um, we're going to remember it for the rest of our lives. And, um, you know, hopefully our job's not done. We're looking to win a national championship here. While the Cardinals are in just their second Final Four, their opponent is making their debut on the big stage. The Cal Bears were like rock stars on the Berkeley campus this week. And along the way to the Crescent City, they are hearing from rock stars. Adam Duritz, uh, the Counting Crows lead singer, was texting me last <laughs> night from Australia saying, I knew when I planned this tour I should have, you know, arranged the dates around the Final Four. I mean, he just, things like that. It's just the Cal community is so excited. On the other side of the Final Four, there is no shortage of postseason experience, led by UConn, who has made 14 Final Fours and won seven national titles, the first of which occurred in 1995 but the last of those titles was in 2010, which equates to a drought by Husky standards. Leading up to this is getting harder and harder for me every year. N not being at the Final Four is, is, is still fun, it's still great. It's gotten harder and harder and harder to enjoy the process leading up to this. And Lindsay doesn't know it yet, but 10 years from now, she's gonna look back on this year and go, man, that's when it all turned for me. The Huskies' opponent is no stranger to the Final Four with three straight appearances, and they're no stranger to the Huskies. Notre Dame has knocked off UConn in the last two national semifinals and beat the Huskies three times already this season. I don't even think the past few games matter. I, I, I don't know if the tables have turned maybe because they're a team when you play against them, um, they can get in your head because when you think about Connecticut basketball, you think of all the championships, all the All-Americans and what have you. And I think now we've overcome that intimidation factor that they have. This is the final year of basketball as we know it in the Big East, and the league is going out with a bang with two teams in the men's Final Four and three here in the women's Final Four. It's a point of pride, but also stirs a range of emotions among its disintegrating members. I think it speaks volumes of not just the women's but the men's basketball also, that you've got five of your eight teams that are still remaining from the Big East. Uh, it's great that we're doing it on the last year together. Uh, I think it's kind of a fitting ending for us to go out in a big way, and uh, we're really proud of that. It's a little sad to see its demise. So this Final Four is the last stand for the current Big East and a breakthrough for a Pac-12 stalwart. And both semifinal matchups figure to be tight showdowns that go down to the wire, meaning that despite the lack of regional flavor, this Final Four should be a tasty delight. In New Orleans, Paul Boron for CST Tonight.